Showtime. All right. Uh, hey, welcome to Did You Watch Survivor Last Night? My name is Jake Scheidel. This is a podcast about reality television and friendship in which I ask my best friend, Thomas Powell, if he did indeed watch a certain reality show last night. Hey, Thomas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, Mon Frere. It's uh, 2017. It's the year of our Lord. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to get better, guys. Oof. Just throw that. Just throw that out there right now. I think everybody has their expectations set as like bad. Things are going to be bad, probably. Well, we were, there's a lot of like can't be worse sentiment, and like, I mean, I hope, I hope so. I yeah, hope I, I was right going to say, I that. feel like that's a very hopeful sentiment. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, the underlying sentiment is it might be just as bad. Yeah, I mean, it's I, that's about what I'm expecting. Oh, I. Like, I don't know, like, there were so many celebrity deaths in 2016, um, which, like, did not help things, but then also, like, a lot, of, a lot of bad shit. I'm like, we're two days in, and then a lot of bad shit has already happened, but no major celebrities have died yet. But I also... Like that's, like, the main thing. Like, it's like, eh, uh, horrible policy things that could potentially have, like, huge aftershocks on, you know, regular and working class people. Yeah. But eh. what if Paul McCartney dies? Yeah, we just don't want Paul McCartney to die. If Ringo Starr dies, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> um, what was I was going to say, you know, there is, we're being pretty pessimistic about 2017, but uh, if you want a more pessimistic view of 2017... All you gotta do is watch a little movie called The Running Man. Yeah, Thomas. Did you watch The Running Man last night? What? Hear what I say. We are the business today. Fuck shit is finished today. All T and J. Need a new PB and J. We dropped the classic today. What? We did a tablet of asses today. The choice with the matches and action. You bet your goddamn rear end I did. Good. Oh my god. I So I was telling my mom about this, how we were gonna watch The Running Man. And I was telling her all about it. And I was just like, I can't even explain to you what this movie is. I'm just like, it's so exciting, and I love it so much, and I love that we watched it. It had been a couple years since I had seen The Running Man. Yeah, me too. And I always knew that I, like, enjoyed it, but God, that movie, I mean, look, there are terrible parts of the movie, but in (laughs) general, that movie is great, and it's actually, like, very good satire. Yeah, uh, especially when you look at the calendar on your wall and it says the same year that it is in the movie and you're like, you got a lot of shit right. Like, yeah, a lot of things that are set in the future, it's like, yeah, you're like close. Um, Like, you're maybe like 20, 30 years off or whatever, but like, there's a lot of shit that happens in the movie and I was like, yeah, no, that's, that makes a lot of sense. That's actually, that's a thing that's happening right now. Um, There's also, like, what this movie does to set itself apart from a lot of other sort of B-movie dystopian future things is just the level of effort that they put into it. Like, they actually mm-hmm. really thought about what they were doing. There's the... I'm always really entertained by the whole setup for the the Running Man TV show, mm-hmm. all of the commercials and stuff that they show, all the billboards in the background. The, um, the what is he, a judge or, like, a... Like a commentator that used to be a runner yeah and it's jesse ventura oh that yeah yeah it is and he's like the best part about that is him it's like mr incredible or whatever his name is it's not his name but yeah it's something it's something like that i think i I I I wrote it down um where is it uh oh captain freedom captain freedom yeah 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 captain freedom is played by jesse the the body ventura who is a fucking weird person in general, but as like a and as a performer, has always been fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And um, he's so good in this. It's also yeah. weird seeing him like with hair and like in his prime. Like he yeah. looks good. And uh, but he has one of my favorite things in the movie, which is this commercial for this workout thing that he does, mm-hmm. where he at one point to end the commercial does like a flex pose and then just like pelvic thrusts off frame <laughs> really happily, and it's amazing. <laughs> look up, look up, look up Captain Freedom or Jesse Ventura and The Running Man, and just watch anything involved with him. Yeah. he's fucking glorious. I loved that character because there's such like this this pro American sentiment. Like, granted, like granted, we're in America and everything, so that makes sense. But like this crazy patriotic ideal that has like been in the American culture for for years for decades 
But, like, this year, the past couple of years especially, it was just like, I'm the most American because I'm the most masculine. And it's just like he's got this, like, American flag. Like, what are, yeah. what are those things called? Um, the straps, the... Oh, like suspenders? Yeah, the suspenders are, like, uh, leotard. I was thinking leotard. Oh, yeah, he's got American flag leotard, yeah. Yeah. Every, there's a lot of... Le- I, I, the one thing this movie did not get right about 2017 is that everybody would be wearing leotards. <laughs> we there's have... a lot of them. Come to Chicago, my friend. There are quite a few leotards. Look, I am not against people wearing leotards. Honestly, this is a vision of the future I can get behind. But, um, I, yeah, uh, uh, Cap, uh, Captain... Captain Freedom, Freedom yeah. He's basically like if Hulk Hogan was in, like, actual fights to the death. Yeah, yeah, um, he's, or, or John Cena, to, uh, make it more yeah, modern. Yeah, more, in a more ma- modern analog, yeah, it'd be like if John Cena, he, he, I mean, because it's Jesse Venturi, he's got the more old style, like, late 80s, you know, 80s promo style. Which mm-hmm. is more Hulk Hogan-y, but yeah, for a modern analog, it'd be like, it'd be like John Cena, but John Cena got in fights where he killed people. Yeah, and he had a cool mustache, and a and workout, was, yeah, and, and was, had a workout routine and was that he Jesse sold on day Jesse MVP. the Body Ventura. Um, okay, so if you have not seen the movie, uh, first, probably you should pause this, but if you don't want to do this, or do that, uh, here's the IMDb summary of the movie. A wrongly convicted man must try to save or t- must try to survive a public execution gauntlet staged as a game show. Here's th- here's the thing with that summary. Um, I've seen this movie a dozen times, probably. I never really re- I never really realized that it was a public execution gauntlet staged as a game show. I thought it was a game show that had very serious consequences. I I went into it being like, yeah, this is a game show. This is what people expect. I didn't realize it was like... No, a, yeah, there, it's it's all like criminal, like high-profile criminals. I, I understood that, but I, I thought that was just like part of the game show. I didn't realize that it was like a modern-day hanging yeah, or something. Supposed to, I mean, yeah, it's, it's waited for them to die, but they're promised that if they can make it through or whatever, that they... End up, you know, on hanging a out on the beach vacation, somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, spoilers, not what happens. Not true. Which, um, uh, that was, for as, like, dumb action B-movie as this is, that was kind of a really surprising scene when, when they found the bodies of past winners. Yeah. And well, that, the very that's end, the kind of thing like, where you see them and they're all, like, really happily in, like, Hawaii or whatever, and I'm like, that's bullshit. I know yeah. these people are dead. <laughs> But yeah, they find their like horribly burned corpses. Um, I one thing I want to talk about with this movie before we really get into the plot too much is mm-hmm. I think this is the most interestingly cast movie I've ever seen. Why is that? Um, this was early in Arnold's career, so it was still kind of novel for Arnold. What was to it be like eighty seven? Eighty seven. Yeah. yeah. This was this was not too long after Terminator. Um, but he's in it. Uh. Jesse Ventura, the main antagonist, is played by Richard Dawson, who was the host of Family Feud for many years, and he is fucking glorious. This This is, like, this is, with no hint of irony, this is a fantastic performance. He, uh, there, this this movie has, like, mediocre reviews, but every single review says that Richard Dawson plays a great villain in it. He owns. He's great. He's so good. He's fantastic. Um, he's in it, uh, Jim Brown... Who had had been an actor for a while, but is is widely known as the the best running back of all time, uh, is in it. Yafet Kodo, it looks like a cool character actor. Um, uh, Mick Fleetwood has a bit part in it. Mick mm. Fleetwood of Fleetwood mm-hmm. Mac. Um, Fleetwood Mick. Yeah, the, the band is called Fleetwood Mick. Yeah, Fl- Fleetwood Mick. He doesn't play any music in it. He's just kind of there. <laughs> uh, and Dweezil Zappa is also just kind of there. Oh yeah. yeah, for some reason. Uh, the, yeah, it's just, it's very, uh, oh, and then also the, uh, the sort of the female lead in the movie is, um, the, I, I knew I had recognized her from something, and she was in Vampire's Kiss, the Nick Cage movie. She's the one that he gives the really psychotic A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like, rant to. Yep, no, I have not seen that movie. Oh, That's dude, a, you have to see Vampire's okay. Kiss. Okay, do you want to put it on the list of things we can watch in the interim? Yes. It doesn't have anything to do with reality television? Uh, no, and it doesn't need to. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just thought that the casting in general was really interesting. Yeah. Um, it was directed by Paul Michael Glazer, who... who went on to did, do other things. 
Uh, oh, it was directed by the guy that played Starsky on Starsky and Hutch. Oh, Owen Wilson. <laughs> um, so he came on, he was like the second director for this movie. The first director was fired after the first week of shooting. Oh, wow, okay. That man went on to direct the 2003 classic Holes, among Ooh. other things. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. And I was just like, why did they fire him? Uh, oh, even- my God. Paul Michael Glazer directed Kazam. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, because, of course, of course he did. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger even said, like, they should not have fired Mr. Holes because uh, Glazer apparently shot the movie like a television show and kind of got rid of the deeper themes. And I was like, this is already pretty deep for an 80s B movie. No, I thought the direction worked perfectly for it. I thought I thought it worked really well too. To think that there was a better version in someone else's mind, like I, I would I would have liked to see that movie. No, th- I mean it would be interesting, but I think this this struck a really nice balance between like actual social critique and mm-hmm. just like B movie fun. Yes, yes, I I would agree with that. Um, you, you want to get into the the plot? If we haven't yeah, already yeah. spoiled the entire movie. Um, so it takes place this year, but it was shot 30 years ago. And it's based on a book by one Stephen King that was written five or ten years before that. Um, the book, I think, takes place in like the 2030s, though, so they upped that a little bit. But it, mm-hmm. not a huge difference. Arnold Schwarzenegger is in prison for gunning down 60 people from a helicopter, but he claims to be innocent. Well, we, he doesn't claim, I mean, we know he's innocent. We know. The first scene, yeah. the first scene of the movie is him refusing to do it. Oh yeah, okay. Um, these people, these innocent women and children, they just want food. That's a good impression. That's a really, that's a very bad. That's impression. a really good impression of Owen Wilson. To, to hell with you. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's, that's the big. That's the big important line is when he says to hell with you when that, he gets the order. That's the big important line from The Running Man. Well, no, it's because later when they show like to to prove that he is the butcher of wherever like. They show footage of them being like, the crowd is unarmed, don't fire on them, and all they show is him going, to, <laughs> the hell with you, and then shooting <laughs> oh, at yeah, all yeah. these people. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you had meant, like, it's the line that everyone remembers from this movie. It's like, there's a few other ones. <laughs> no, there are there are many more notable lines. Also, I don't know why it took me this long to realize it, but the, the, the opener to our show is... is it's the from The Running Man, Man yeah. Um, I don't know why I didn't immediately notice that. Yeah, um, yeah I've been putting that in the beginning for quite a while. And, yeah, that's all, that's all I have to say about that. Uh, so he's in a prison camp, uh, and you hear some guards, you overhear some guards talking about this show, The Running Man. And it's like, oh man, this show's a big deal. Um, and then the Arnold Schwarzenegger, whose name is Ben Kingsley? <laughs> is now, it Ben Kingsley? It, it's one of Ben Richards. Long line. Ben Richards. Yeah, Ben Richards. It's one in a long line of names. Arnold, them giving him like the most white bread like Americana names, like mm. the most boring like like John Freedom, like basically. And I he, heard that he, guy's he a captain. Has, he just, yeah, he just has like the thickest Austrian accent, and it's like I, it's like I, I am Colonel, uh, I'm Colonel David Smith. Mm. Uh, so. Ben Richards and his uh, team, I guess, the the guys he was in the helicopter with, plan to break out to expose the truth of what happened. Wait, were, they, I, were they the guys that were using the helicopter with? Because those guys so. all knocked him out. Or did they? Yeah, no, those guys weren't well, in they, the helicopter. They, they, they were just in the prison with him. They, yeah, but they know what actually happened. So they, yeah, no, they, they know the truth. Yeah. Uh, and somebody says, fucking 2017... Truth hasn't been so popular recently. That's like straight out of the out of the headlines or whatever this the is, phrase is. This, is. this is where science fiction becomes science fact, Peter. Yeah, for real. Uh, I like. I honestly paused the movie when that happened so I could write that down. It's just like that's pretty fucking prescient. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously, because it's a movie, they break out. Good job. And then we meet yeah, him and Yafet Koto get into a fight with each other and it starts a big riot and they, they escape. Uh, yeah, also, they all, have, they all have collars that have, like, bombs in them, uh, which I'm sure influenced uh, best movie of 2016, Suicide Squad. Oh, that's a good movie. Collars that have bombs. Yeah, great Will, movie. William Smith is in that. 
Uh, Jaden my Smith. Favorite, my, my favorite, my favorite part of it is Jared Leto. Oh, he plays because the Joker. His Joker is pretty twisted. It's like he's got all these tattoos that say scary things on them. I love like, oh. my favorite. My favorite takedown of that was. Um, uh, one of one of my longtime Twitter followers said that it'd be like if the, him having like twisted or whatever uh, tattooed on him, it would be like if they remade The Godfather and Don Corleone had uh, Italian mafia tattooed <laughs> on him. <laughs> <laughs> or like if he had like ring like rings on each knuckle that were like I'm in the mob. <laughs> Oh, what, what are your rings about? It's a family thing. Yeah, he's got, like, the word refuse with, like, the don't sign around it. <laughs> uh, Ref- refuse, but then the S is a dollar sign? Yeah, yeah. Because it's about money. <laughs> this is good. This is already way better than Brian De Palma's stupid, terrible godfather yeah. that everyone hates. Yeah, for real. Um, well, let's, uh, let's put it in the books. Make it happen. Uh, you know, they, I bet they'll remake The Godfather. I bet that that would be so fucking stupid. Why would it, they do no, that? It, because it's the dumbest thing possible. But they all they want to make is stuff off of like, like they remade Ben Hur. You think they're not going to remake? That's other true. Stuff like that? I was just they're thinking gonna, they're going to remake like Citizen Kane. Yeah, <laughs> it's all it's all going to be shot on a GoPro or something. And it's not even going to be in that like. Um, Oh, who was it that that remade so did the shot for shot remake of Psycho? Um, Vince Vaughn. Well, he was in it, but he's not the director. Mm, you no, don't Gus know Van Zandt. It's Gus. Oh Van Zandt. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. It was... It's not even like that. Where like, it was just like an interesting project for him to try. Like mm. it was kind of a, an honorable failure. Hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't see why they. I I don't see why they remade Ben Hur. Like, who wouldn't to see that? I don't think anyone because, really, but... people are fucking... St- the, like, Hollywood executives are fucking morons, that's why. But, but like, who do you think would go see a movie about a newspaper tycoon in 2017? They don't <laughs> care about... They don't care about that. They no. don't care because it's here's, got name recognition. Here's how they update Citizen Kane. It's, it's, uh... What was it? Forrest? Is it the same Forrest or Francis? The main character from Citizen Kane. Oh, um... Fuck. It's Forrest, right? Or am I thinking I of something I else? No, I don't I don't think it is. I should really... Yeah, for, for, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump from Citizen Kane. He has a grand, a great-grandchild no, now. His name is Charles Foster Kane. That's why it's Citizen Kane. Who is Fos- Foster Kane? Okay. That's where the F came from. Um, so he has a great-grandson who is... <laughs> A an editor at BuzzFeed, but he. Oh, I knew, I was gonna say BuzzFeed. I was gonna re- I was gonna recommend the. He for, has a he has an old iPod Touch, um, but we don't know that until the very end. And in, inscribed in the back, remember when you could do that? It just oh, says, yeah, it just says Rosebud IV, like it's the fourth of, one. It reminded him of a simpler time when he was making listicles and wasn't, wasn't, <laughs> uh, it, it didn't own a media empire. Oh man. How did we remake The Godfather and Citizen Kane in 20 minutes? We're fucking uh, We gotta geniuses. save these elevator pitches, because they need the... Yeah, we can sell these these screenplays for, like, $2 million each. For at least. For yeah, two, mil- $2 million for each of us for each script, you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, total, easily. total of 4 mil. Yeah, total of 8 mil. Well, we 4 got mil per... Yeah. yeah, 4 mil per person per script. Yeah. So, 16 mil for each of us. Uh, yeah, it, it keeps going up. You guys gotta pounce on it. <laughs> yeah. Hurry up. Um, where were we? Uh, oh, we meet Damon Killian, who is uh, from the Family Feud. Oh, my God. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we remake Citizen Kane, we need to get... I guess there's not really a, main, a major villain in Citizen Kane. Okay, when we remake The Godfather, we got to get Steve Harvey in there. Charles Foster, Young Charles Foster Kane will be played by Michael B. Jordan. Yes. And then, I, I like that you're on the same wavelength as me, and then old Charles Foster Kane will be played by Steve Harvey. Yeah, you got to get the Family Feud host in there. Whenever you're making a movie about the future. You have to. It's kind of the, it's kind of the rules of Hollywood. If we can't, if we it's can't kind get of... him... If we can't get him, then we'll try and get Richard Karn. I'm sure he's not doing anything. I would rather have Steve Harvey, but... I oh, mean, I we can too. we can work it out. Um, yeah. Also, Steve Harvey will take that money. Yeah, I was I was I said that it's the, the rules of Hollywood. 
to get the Family Feud uh, host on in a movie about the future. What I meant to say is it's the rules of Hollyweed. Oh yeah, Hollyweed. My favorite town. <laughs> my my favorite my favorite joke uh, past like the Hollyweed thing is really funny, but past that is it's like oh no, some leftists changed it. It was just Bernie would have one. <laughs> That's good. Um, so Damon Killian is played by your dad, Steve Harvey. Mm-hmm. Um, he fires a janitor. Um, why? Why does he fire the janitor? <laughs> Just because? Like no, a I janitor. It's he, like a, he like trips over the janitor's foot. That's like, what he it was. Steps yeah, on yeah, his yeah. foot, and the guy, the guy's like, it's a good introduction to the type of person that he is. Cause yeah, exactly. The guy's like, oh, I'm so sorry, and he's like, oh, you got nothing to apologize for, you know. And he's like, and then he steps into the job. elevator. Yeah, everything, and he it looks fires great. Him. You're doing good work. And then he, then when he gets into the elevator, he turns to whoever he's with and is like, that guy's mopping those floors tomorrow. You're fired too. Yeah. Um. So one of his associates tells him that the ratings for The Running Man, which is the most popular show in the country, the ratings have peaked. Uh, and then we, we meet the love they, interest. I, they've, love, yeah, they've, like, they've plateaued, right? Yeah, like, they've They're plateaued. still getting good ratings, but... Yeah. Um, but they want better ratings. Then we meet uh, the love interest. She's going into her apartment. And as she walks in, another 20 thing, 2017 thing... Uh, she tells her apartment to do things like turn yeah, on the she's lights. She's like, she's like Alexa, turn on the lights. <laughs> turn on the lights, make coffee, and turn on the TV. Like those are those are things I you love can that do this there's year. There's accurate stuff about that, but they couldn't conceive of like flat screen or high definition TV. Yeah, so, like this is the highest resolution yeah. anything will ever be in. Yeah. Also, she still has an answering machine. Yep. <laughs> she's like 23 years old and has an answering machine in 2017. Okay. Uh, yeah, nobody's batting a thousand with these. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's more interesting for the stuff that they got right about it. But I, I just, I, especially the idea that these broadcasts are in like shit quality is hilarious. Yeah. To me. It's, it's great. Um, and then we meet captain freedom. Then back with Killian. He calls the justice department, you know, from the government and asks for the entertainment department. It's pretty good. That's pretty mm-hmm. accurate for this year. Uh, and then there's a show, they show a, pre- a preview for another show on television called Climbing for Dollars, in which a contestant climbs a rope to grab some cash, but the entire time is being, being chased uh, and barked at by some dogs the whole time. <laughs> And I am so upset that that show doesn't actually exist. That show has already been greenlit by True TV. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. It's already been greenlit and canceled. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so then they get into the whole game. Um, they get Arnold Schwarzenegger in there, and the love interest is uh, sneaking around the studio. And she looks through some videos... That are on what look like black index cards. Yeah, that was there's interesting. There's nothing digital about it. Well, you skipped you skipped a very important part, which is that there's a there's a broadcast on her on her television that says to be on the lookout for for Ben because Ben Richards, yep, Ben Richards because he's a, a wanted murderer. And then right when she sees it, he walks up behind her because it's his brother's old apartment, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um. And he moved out like a, a month before to go to some re-education thing, mm-hmm. and um, I moved out like he was like, "Oh, I'm I'm done here. Time to go to the re-education thing." Like he was made to move out, uh, and he basically like kind of kidnaps her. Like he's just trying to to use her in order to get to. He wants to go to Hawaii, right? He, I think, he just wants to get out of. Just go somewhere. Yeah. He's wearing. He's wearing, like, a Hawaiian shirt when they get to the Yeah, and big hat and glasses. I I mentioned that specifically because there's a line later in the movie that I thought was really funny that he has. What line? Where where they're, like, both uh, trying to escape, and she's like, oh, I wish I was in Hawaii right now. And he's like, well, you had the chance. I even had the shirt for it. Oh, yeah, that was good. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, she sees that video. Well, she, like, she basically... Gets and gets jumpy and gets gets him arrested. Yeah, uh, and then he gets put on the show, um, and then she realizes that uh, what they are saying happened did not actually happen, and 
she looks through some black index cards for the uh, the accurate video. Um, maybe they were like maybe they were like uh, you know jump drives. We don't know. I I mean I guess. I mean they weren't, but <laughs> I just like I feel like most things on a television production of that scale would be digital. No, they were they were like this is a time where they were like, well, obviously the next step for for video formats is tiny VHS tapes. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they weren't totally wrong with that. Things just kept getting smaller until there were just yeah. no things anymore. It's it's like the GameCube being like, we're on the cutting edge of of disc technology. Yeah. we have tiny, we have smaller discs. Uh, I wish that had taken off. I, I really liked this. Yeah, I liked the GameCube. TBH. I liked the GameCube because you could carry it around and like it had a little handle. Also, and also it was made of nintendium, the hardest substance known to man. <laughs> so you could defend yourself against someone with it. Um, GameCube was the first system with the Pikmin games, right? That is correct. I love those games. They were so sweet and cute. It's a good game. Yeah, they're good games. Also, the first system with uh, Animal Crossing on it, oh, which yeah? is similar, similarly sweet and cute. Hmm. I thought Animal Crossing was a little later than Pikmin. Or a little later I mean, than it, the GameCube. Was... No, no, it started on the GameCube. Hmm. Wait, what came between GameCube and Wii, then? Was there anything? No. The, the oh, wow. DS, I guess. Oh, well, that doesn't count. Handheld consoles aren't real consoles. Yep. That's what I'm saying. Although I was just saying how I liked the GameCube because you could hold it in your hand. So, what am I... Yeah, you know, it, had the, it had the handle, which was nice. Yeah. Um, so, the, uh, Ben Richards and his friends he broke out of prison with are now forced into the game and chased by the hunters. Um, one of the hunters is called Sub-Zero. Uh, yes. Ben Richards. Sub-Zero fucking rules. I, I mean, I guess. I don't think any of them are, like, super cool dudes. Well. I thought, I thought, I thought him and, uh, and James Brown's. Or not James Brown, Jim Brown's. <laughs> Technically, he's James Brown. Uh, his character's name is Fireball. I thought Fireball was Oh, cool. yeah. Um, so Ben Richards kills Sub-Zero, and that says one of the most famous lines from the movie. Yeah, Who's I referenced that in our last episode. Zero. Who's Sub-Zero now Plan Zero? <laughs> it's perfect. I remember... He, Arnold has some of the worst one-liners in this movie I've oh, ever yeah. heard. I remember seeing clips from this video, or from this movie, in an old video... Um, like 10 years ago um, that were just like worst one-liners in action oh, movies some, of all there's time. There's some great ones. And there are like three or four of them from this movie. And like yep. out, out of context, yeah, they're terrible. But in context, they're still terrible, uh, but you appreciate no, them more. They're they're great. Like yeah. I, I, the movie, it would be a lesser film if it didn't have them. Like yeah. especially the, the like, hey, light Ed, hey, Christmas hey, tree. Christmas tree. Um, <laughs> do you think they could remake this movie? I I hope to God no one remakes it. Cause I mean, they, they kind it, of have. It would the be. Hunger it would be. And, yeah, I was gonna say it'd but, be like the Hunger Games or like Maze Runner shit or whatever. Mm. And I don't want that. They'd make it into some like PG thirteen YA bullshit. Um, yeah. What, whatever happened with the Maze Runner? Did that take off or did it's, people? Uh, like... They made a second one. They made the Scorch Trials. Oh which is yeah. Maybe the worst movie title. I... No, it's, sorry. It's the uh, the second worst because is isn't there. Isn't there a movie called The Bye Bye Man right now that's coming out? Yeah, what is that about? It's a stupid horror movie, but I think that's the worst title for a movie I've ever heard. Um, what is that movie about, though? There's like a but there's a Bye Bye Man and he kills you probably. Sure, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> You've seen the movie. <laughs> um, the uh, speaking of the Maze Runner, did you know? That doesn't have anything to do with. Oh, but wait. Okay, one of the dudes on the Real World this season was on like a one-off MTV show that was like to promote the Maze Runner, and he ended up winning, I guess, like two hundred fifty thousand dollars or something random like that. Uh, <laughs> And now he's on he's on the real world. So it's time for real world roundup. I almost forgot about it until you brought up the Maze Runner. I think that's really funny. Uh, so the dude who was in the Maze Runner started dating this girl. Oh, Tia, remember Tia? She was, she got pregnant last episode. Um, now she, yeah, it happened right then and there. It uh, she she left because um, that's a lot to deal with. Uh, 
And then <laughs> Peter, who was the dude from the Maze Runner thing, um, got really upset at his girlfriend, Jen, and then uh, yelled at her a lot for, like, no apparent reason. Um, and it was really gross and made everyone uncomfortable. And then so- Was he the one that was yelling at his girlfriend because she was dancing or whatever? Yeah, same dude, same dude. He yelled at her again for um, being friends with his roommates. Wow, he seems like a really cool guy. Yeah, and then somebody looked up um, verbal abuse or something like that on their, like, house computer, and <laughs> and she saw it, the girlfriend saw it, and got really upset. I was like, no, I've been in a, a verbally abusive relationship, and this isn't it. And I was like, but it kind of seems that like is it verbal is. Abuse. Also, who, <laughs> who looks that up on Google? Yeah. Like... And then also, like, leaves it up there. Oh, also, the girls who looked it up when like, went on a hike with their mom who was in town to, like, improve their relationship. I don't know. You know the producer. That's a producer thing. Yeah, you absolutely. know the producer said that absolutely. shit. Absolutely. Um, good news, though. Real World season finale next week. I'm good. so ready for this season to be over. Get it over with. For real. Um, who's going to win, do you think? Who, who's going to win the Real World? Yeah. Uh, no one. No one good. will win this season. <laughs> But I know that at least two of the people from this season are going to be on the next season of The Challenge, which starts at some point. We'll get into more of that TBD. later. Um, so one of the subplots is that they're trying to take down this... Uh, what, what, is, what is it called? They're trying to take down like a communications grid yeah. so that they can... Or at least just hack it so that they can broadcast that... The the tape or whatever that um, mm-hmm. that Amber got that shows that that Ben is innocent. Yeah, and then they, if they if they hijack the feed or whatever, they can show since it's the most watched show on television. Like everybody's gonna see it. Mm-hmm. Um, then uh, they break into the room they're trying to break into the whole movie, and one of the guys on the team uh, says, "Don't touch that dial. There's no dials anymore, Ron." Come on, uh, you should know this that. Is, this is um, this is the point where uh, Buzzsaw and uh, Buzzsaw other... now plane saw. Yeah, now plane now plane saw. Uh, and what the fuck was the other guy's name? I'm trying to find him. Captain the, Freedom. I, no, it was the guy that the, uh, the guy that shot the electric ship that had like the the uh, that say, also was an opera singer. Electro buzz. It's, that that is a Pokemon. <laughs> um. Yeah, he wasn't in it for very long. He like was introduced and then immediately killed. But I no he. He, I don't think he ever actually gets killed. No, he gets killed late. He gets dispatched well, he's, by he's Arnold the, at a certain he's point. He's the last one introduced before Captain Freedom, right? No, Fireball. Fireball was the last one. Um, they just don't have him in the credits for this. I don't know why. Read, read, the, read the character names to me, and I'll say, it's that one. Oh, it's, Dy- it's Dynamo. Dynamo. There he is. It's that one. Yeah. Um, what about him? <laughs> Oh, no, this is the point where Buzzsaw and Dynamo, both, the one guy's like, oh, I just can't choose, and, uh, and, uh, what's his name, um, Killian is like, well, you won't have to, because we're gonna send them both. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so there, Dynamo is a guy that shoots electricity, who's also an opera singer, and he drives in, like, a car, <laughs> he's like a little go-kart, <laughs> and Buzzsaw is, like, a really, he looks like if anyone is familiar with, um, with Big Van Vader, the uh, the '90s wrestler, mm-hmm. he kind of looks like him, and he has like a chainsaw, and he has a motorcycle too. So they 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 go after everybody. Yep. Um, and then, unsurprisingly, Arnold Schwarzenegger gets away from them um, either through Ar- yeah. Can- Arnold Schwarzenegger um, chainsaws uh, Buzzsaw in the crotch. Like he yep. they they fight over the chainsaw, and he out you know they have a little test of strength, and he beats him. And twists it around and uh, like, puts his, it up into his yeah. crotch. Yeah, which is nice because wasn't he also trying to rape the love interest like five minutes earlier? I'm sure. Yeah, that yeah. seems like something he would do. Um, this is this is uh, the terminology I would use for this uh, is uh, his dick got blamoed because 
<laughs> something our friend Patrick said in reference to the movie Antichrist, where uh, Willem Dafoe gets his dick, like uh, like a, a, a log, like very forcibly rammed into his <laughs> dick. <laughs> so this is similar in terms of... <laughs> yeah. Uh... Um, yeah, so he that happens. He kills Yafit Kodo, um, and then... I think um, Dynamo kills the other guy. Uh, Harold Weiss is the other guy's name. Mm. Um, I think he kills him and incapacitates Amber. And Arnold... Arnold defeats him in, like, a very lame way where he just runs up all of this, like, refuse. This, like, big refuse pile. Mm-hmm. And gets the guy to flip his little car. <laughs> and then has a, has a chance to impale him commando style. Uh with, like, a pipe, but shows mercy, because he's not going to kill a defenseless opponent. And the crowd does not like that. Yeah, because they want they want to see Ben Richards win. The crowd is well, turned. They just, just want well, to wanna see him win, but they also want to see people die. So. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like the end of the movie is obvious. Ben Richards wins. Um, but before that happens, there's, like, this is just the last note I have on this whole thing. But it's... The most important line, for me at least, um, concerning this podcast especially, uh, Killian and Ben Richards have their final confrontation on the main stage in front of this whole crowd. Uh, It's a huge crowd. And Killian says, this is television. That's all it is. It has nothing to do with people. It's to do with the ratings. For 50 years, we've told you what to eat, what to drink, what to wear. For Christ's sake, then, don't you understand? Americans love television. They wean their kids on it. They love game shows. They love wrestling. They love sports, violence. So what do we do? We give them what they want. That's a really good little monologue there at the end. No, it's a great little monologue. Um, also, just just real quick, I, uh, I I like Jim Brown as Fireball. He he gets killed because he uh, gets he's got like a, a big flamethrower and. Uh, Arnold pulls out, like, the tube that has the kerosene in it or whatever, mm-hmm. and then throws a flare at him, and says something like, need a light, It was just really, in, like, a really stiff, di- like, delivery, and then when he blows up, he's like, oh, he was such a hothead, which is also just fucking terrible. It's great. But, but I was really, all- like, I enjoyed him, but I was almost disappointed when he showed up a second time, because there's one point when it's Dynamo and... Uh, Buzzsaw going after uh, Ben Richards where they cut to someone and it looks like just a guy but he's really it's Jim Brown so he's really interesting looking and he just goes yeah do it for Sub-Zero and I'm like <laughs> that dude ruled <laughs> yeah the, just the one point where he shows up I was like I don't want to see him again I want that to be a, a complete non sequitur but he, he does show up again and, and gets dispatched um, also they, they do a thing I really like where they, they fake uh, ben and Amber's deaths they have like a projection thing mm-hmm. so you get a fight with with Captain Freedom and uh, and Ben where Captain Freedom like snaps Amber's neck immediately and then drives Ben into like this spike wall and it looks like it kills him but it's just like it's fake they're imposters mm-hmm. uh, state of the art green screen technology I also liked Captain Freedom coming in and complaining about them. They put these, like, weird little, like, robot things on him, and he's like, this is bullshit. I used to be out there killing people with my bare hands. <laughs> it, it's, it's great. Um, but anyway, yeah, so they, Ben, Ben Richards eventually wins and kills uh, Killian by uh, shooting him on, like, this go-kart thing that they use. Like a, to sh- the sled that they shoot yeah, the game like a, with. like a big sled thing, and he just, like, shoots him out into like a sign and he blows up yeah it's great it's a great final segment for that it's character. it's very it's very satisfying um oh also my my other favorite line in this is after he after he takes care of of uh dynamo and uh buzzsaw he in like a private feed killian offers him the right to be they're called stalkers i think is what the uh Hunt- the guys stalkers that go- or hunters they're called stalkers, okay. I think, but they're they're the you know like Sub Zero and whoever else yeah. are, are all stalkers, and he offers him like a three year contract mm-hmm. for like a pretty good amount of money and like a nice condo, and mm-hmm. uh, he <laughs> fix it like rips the camera off of its mount <laughs> that is pointing at him and goes, "I'll tell you what I think of it. <laughs> it's, you can t- it's like uh, you can take your offer and shove it." 
But uh, but you'd better leave enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it into your stomach and break your goddamn spine. <laughs> and then he like bra- like cr- destroys the camera and goes oh, <laughs> and it's it's wonderful. As if he could feel it on the other side. Yeah, yeah, it's great. Um, God, this movie fucking rules. It's a it's great so movie. Good. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I was telling my mom about it. I was like, you should really watch. It's like a dumb action movie from the '80s, but it's like really good. You should watch it. It's it's smart enough. It's kind of yeah. like. Uh, I wouldn't put it on the same level of quality as this, but it's got, like, a very, um, kind of, like, RoboCop or another, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, movie, Total Recall. Mm. Like, it's got that, that kind of, uh, satirical bent to it. Mm-hmm. And it takes place in the current year, so it's probably gonna be on, I don't know, TBS or whatever the TBS for sci-fi movies is. Speaking of TBS, have you seen Search Party yet? No, I've heard it's good. Oh, watch it. I've... In the last week, I've watched it twice. It's really good. I, uh, I'll check it out. Yeah. Oh, Jake, by the way, uh, if they ever make remake The Running Man, you know who has to play Killian? Steve Harvey. No. Oh, who? Jeff Probst. Jeff Probst would be so perfect for it. He's got he's, he's got great. that great smile, his dimples. He'd be perfect. He'd be great. People would trust him unconditionally, but he's a bad guy. Yeah. And that's what's great. Well, now now it needs to happen. Okay, so so far we, today we've remade The Godfather, Citizen Kane, and The Running Man, updated them all appropriately. Great job, us. Who's in the Arnold role for this? For the if, remake uh, of The Running Man? Yeah. Does it need to be somebody from Survivor? I feel like that would only be no. appropriate. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a little too on the nose. It'd be like if they had a Family Feud contestant as the lead of this movie. Is that not how Arnold Schwarzenegger got his start? Uh, believe it or not, yeah, he he did some other stuff first. Huh, interesting. Um, who would be Arnold Schwarzenegger in the remake of The Running Man? Probably The Rock. I think The Rock would be the guy that you cast. Do you think so, this. or is he too old now? Arnold was in his, what, like, late 30s, early 40s? Oh, was years, he? I think. How old was he? I don't know. It Let's came out in 87. He was born in he was... the mid-50s, probably? Yeah, he was 40 when this movie oh, came out. okay, so The Rock's about around yeah, there. Yeah, this is the perfect sign, and you, you want somebody that's yeah. a similar specimen. Yeah. He'd be perfect. Um, so you have you have John Cena in the, the Captain Freedom role. Sure, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you, uh, I would say you do, like, um, for, for Amber, you have, like, uh, maybe Aubrey Plaza? Uh... Yeah, sure, why not? I mean, she can be in anything. I'm happy to see her in anything. Um, what What was... Um, I don't know. I don't feel like that character had a lot of, like, really distinct like a, personality traits. No, there wasn't a ton going on. You could just cast whoever yeah. in that. But I, I think Aubrey Plaza would bring something to it. Yeah. For for the Stalkers, you have, like, uh, Kevin Owens can be... Oh, Lisa. yeah. Uh... Who'd be who'd be a good Sub Zero? Oh. Maybe you have like uh, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Brock Lesnar would be good to have as one of them. Uh, yeah, maybe just, Brock just all wrestlers. Sub-Zero. Just yeah, all wrestlers and Jeff Probst. Yeah. If it fits, it fits perfectly. I mean, for the, for the type of person that they want for that, you have like uh, Braun Strowman is uh, is Dynamo. Dude, Braun Strowman rules. Don't you dare! Don't I think he's me. boring. Oof. No, he's great. He used to be boring. Now he's awesome. Okay. Uh, and uh, then we'll say Fireball is... Donald Glover. <laughs> no. He's got to be in everything. Fireball is like... Oh, no. You know who Fireball can be played by? Who? Dale. Mr. Pitbull. You mean Dale? Yeah, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> Dale. Pitbull's real name is Dale. No, Fireball Fireball is played by uh, Dave Batista. Okay, sure. I can get behind that. Um, Jeff, let's make this happen. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Jeff executive produces this, obviously. Obviously. Um, who directs it though? Ooh, um mm. I would say uh, the What's his name? The guy that's directing the next Star Wars movie. R- Ryan Johnson. Ryan Johnson. Ooh, yeah, that would be good. Um, or, or like, Justin Lin. Yeah, you could do... Oh, Justin Lin would be perfect. Yeah, Justin Lin. Yeah. I just saw it. I, I, I went out to eat 
last night and uh, Tokyo Drift was on one of the TVs and I was like, fucking this movie. But for, for like the first ten minutes, I was like, is this Tokyo Drift? Tokyo Drift is not very good, but nope. the filmmaking in it is good. Yeah, it's a very interesting movie. The, the whole time I was watching it, I was like, I've seen this, but I don't know what it is. That was the one where we counted like 24 montages in it or whatever. Like, it's ridiculous. There's yeah. like barely any dialogue. Um... It's much, much better than Too Fast, Too Furious. I can, and anyone who says otherwise is fucking lying to you. Too Fast, Too Furious is one of the worst, most boring movies you can watch. What a weird franchise. R.I.P. Paul Walker. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Callback. Um, Alright, so that's that's been The Running Man. Great stuff. Next week um, will be our final week before we start talking about new episodes of Are You the One? You're going to lose your Are You the One virginity, Thomas? Are you so excited? Ooh, finally popping that cherry. Um, so we're going to go through the cast list um, and watch like some previews uh, if you want. I'm not going to force you into that. But if you want to watch a preview just to kind of get an idea of what the show's about, do that. Um, I think the cast list is on like MTV and they all have stupid bios that are like, I'm super ambitious and important and like so funny and everybody loves me. Why can't I'm anybody a dumb love moron. me? <laughs> yeah, that's what they're all saying. Um, so we'll go through all those and make fun of a bunch of people. That sounds fun, right? Sounds like a good time. Um, all right. So you know what happens tonight, Thomas? You know what's happening what? like one minute from now, I think? Oh, nope. This minute right now. It just turned 7 o'clock. Uh, the Bachelor starts. Speaking of The Bachelor, let's get Ashley from Bitch, Bachelor in Paradise on Survivor with that hashtag. Yes. Ashley from Bip on Survivor. Hell yeah. It's, it hasn't happened yet, but I have not lost hope. Yeah, it will. It will. It has to. All right. Uh, you can email it uh, us at, it's what, it's what uh, did you watch last night? Did you watch last it? night at gmail.com? At, at gmail.com. Our Twitter handle is D-Y-W-S-L-N. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm Tom Not Tom on Twitter. Uh, my name is Jake Scheidel on Twitter. Um. When you email us, or um, sign it your pal Jeff Probst. It's really nice. Shoot us a review. We've got two episodes until first episode of Are You the One, and which is also episode sixty nine. Yeah, nice. Nice. Jake, would you say would you say that when I I reference his name on this show? You know, you that, know, you that know is, that he is you, banned from this show. Would you Would you say that it's a <laughs> microaggression towards you? Yes, I would say that. <laughs> I don't. I don't appreciate you doing that. <laughs> oh, sorry you need your safe space where there are no dirty jobs, <laughs> precious snowflake. All right. Well, that's been the show this week. Jeff Prost is a cuck. No, I would never say that. But you did. I mean, I did, but I won't. <laughs> I won't say it again. <laughs> I would never mean that. Thank you. Um, all right. So, Happy New Year. Uh, and as have a, a great 2017. Have a great 2017. Have a great summer. And deuces. This is no game.
Jeff Bruce is a cuck. No, I would never say that. <laughs>